How's it going everybody? CJ here, back with another video. We're doing the first thoughts today. This one is on Yuriok of the Burning Gang. This card seems pretty cool, bringing Mana Burn back. If you guys enjoy these videos, remember, comment down below what you can do with Yoriak of the Burning Gang. Let me know if you're going to build a deck, if there's any cool cards that you're putting in the deck that I did not mention today. Let me know, because I'd love to hear about it. And if you're using any of the ideas I had in this video, let me know. I appreciate knowing that I'm actually helping. And like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel, you can check us out on Patreon. That's the best way. And you can join us in Discord, get into a couple games with us. Also, I've got a TCG Player affiliate link down below. So if you want to buy any of the cards to talk about in this video, buy them through there and it helps the channel. Also, speaking of getting into games with us, i got a giveaway going on right now. So whoever wins the giveaway wins both this sweet Elder Mingus Highlander playmat. I'll sign it for you and everything. And you get the chance to appear inside of a video with us. So you're going to do a game. Or we'll do a spell table game for the CJDH Commander Gameplay Series. And you'll be on the channel. It'll be a good time. So all you got to do is there's a link down below to the giveaway video. And I'll tell you how to enter. It'll also be featured at the end of the video. You'll see a little click button thing over here that you can just click on and it'll take you to the video and it'll tell you how to enter. It's very easy to enter. Hopefully we get a lot of entrance. So we're gonna start this off. First, this deck is all about giving your get, mana burn. It's about giving your opponents mana, making them tap their lands for mana and making them lose life that way. So the there's a bunch of cards that actually give your opponents mana, which is weird, but they work well in the deck. You got stuff like Blink Moth Urn, which gives them mana based on artifacts. There's Eladamri's Vineyard, Magus of the Vineyard, and Shizuko, Color of Autumn. All these just give your opponent's mana in their upkeep. Or maybe it's their first main phase. Then there's Victory Chimes and Spectral Searchlight. You can tap those to give an, any player mana. Victory Chimes is nice because that untaps during each opponent's untap step. So you can just tap it during end step and ping everybody for one during their end steps. Uh, then you got stuff like Dictated Karametra, Heartbeat of Spring, Mana Flare, Zerta Ancient. All of those let you uh, double mana for everybody. So people have like awkward mana costs and stuff like that. They could end up with a couple mana left over thanks to the double mana. Then there's stuff like Valley Maker. You can sacrifice a forest and choose a player. They add three green. So it's a weird card. It's not great, but it works well in the deck. You can also sack a mountain to deal three to a creature. Um, next we got doublers. That's the next thing. So you're going to be dealing a lot of damage with this stuff. You're trying to give your opponents as much damage as possible, stacking the damage. You're going to need stuff like um, Furnace of Wrath, Dictated Twin Gods, Torbrand, Fiery Emancipation. All these will double or triple your mana or just add like an extra two to your mana to your damage, which is always really good. But these actually don't help with the mana burn stuff. That's all life loss. So that helps with a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about in the video because there's a lot of direct damage stuff. But for the life loss of the mana burn, you can throw in Wound Reflection or Archfiend of Despair to double that, which is definitely an auto include. Uh, a lot of the damage stuff is going to be coming up in this next segment, which is called I, I Got Land Stacks. It's stuff that makes it so your opponents have to tap their mana, or when they do tap their mana, they're getting damage dealt to them. It seems good. It, there's a lot of cards that seem very good inside this deck, like Burning Earth. Whenever a player taps a non-basic land, it deals one to them. You got stuff like Citadel of Pain. This one's really, really good in the deck. Uh, it deals X, So it basically, either they tap their lands or they don't tap their lands. If they don't tap their lands, then they're going to take damage from Citadel of Pain. If they do, then they're going to take Mana Burn. So it works very well there. Uh, you got Mana Web. If you combine that with Urborg, every time your opponent taps, whenever a player taps a land, or an opponent taps a land, they have to tap all their lands because they could all produce black. But even without Urborg, it's still a very good card. Um, you got Mana Barbs. Just another way to deal damage whenever an opponent taps a land. Uh, Monsoon. Uh, this is a cool one. It just, it just hurts islands, really. Whenever an island, so basically if an opponent keeps islands up, they will deal mana burn to them. And so they'll deal one damage to them and then also they have to tap it. So either way, they're taking, 
like if they if an opponent's gonna leave up isle, like leave up a couple islands, they're gonna take mana burn from it no matter what. Either from tapping it and losing the mana, or from not tapping it and monsoon dealing one to them. Uh, next up, we got Nature's Will. Uh, basically, uh, it's kind of like Sword of Feast and Famine, except you get to tap all your opponent's lands and untap yours. So that's just another good way to like kind of stack the lands. Um, overabundance. Another mana doubler, but also whenever you tap a land for mana, uh, it deals one damage to them. So it could cause mana burn, plus it's dealing damage directly. Um, power Surge. During each player's upkeep, it deals one damage to them for each land that they control. It's untapped. So if they leave mana, basically the same thing. Like... Either they're going to choose to take mana burn or just take damage at their upkeep because they're untapped. Both ways are both. I mean, it works. It's very on theme. It's forcing damage. It, a lot of these cards are useless outside of this deck because of the fact there is no mana burn usually now. But because this commander creates mana burn, these cards have a home. Uh, Price of Glory. Whenever a player taps a land for mana during another player's turn, destroy that land. Just a good stacks card. Scald. Uh, whenever a player taps an island, it deals one to them. There's a lot of there's a lot of red cards that don't like islands. Uh, Stone Shaker Shaman. At the, so they lose or they have to sack at the end of each player's turn. They sacrifice an untapped land. So it's either take mana burn or. You sack a land. <laughs> Tectonic instability. Whenever a land comes into play, tap all lands its controller controls. So that like really slows people down. You have to play your cards before you can play your land for turn. And it it creates a lot of difficulties when trying to play cards on curve. Sabo's Web, another good way to stack lands. War's Toll forces your opponent to tap all their lands. That card's perfect in the deck. Then you got cool stuff like Hall of Gemstones. You can, because of the fact that you can make all your colors with your commander, like your commander taps for Jund, so you have access to all three colors no matter what, you can stack your opponents out by making them only choose one color to use each turn. Winter Orb and Static Orb, they work pretty well in the deck because your commander, well, Winter Orb is special, especially because your commander is a mana dork. But both of them are just solid for stacking out your opponents. You can, but then you can go the opposite way. Use stuff like Awakening and Seedborn Muse, but Seedborn Muse is only you. So that way you can activate um, Yoriak every turn. So that way you can get the most value out of it. Then it's a lot of untappers. Stuff like Mage Rite Stone, Jandor Saddlebags, Puppet Strings, Sword of the Perrins, Thousand Year Elixir. Umbral Mantle, all of these let you activate more than once a turn, which is really good. Uh, Umbral Mantle and or and Sword of Parents, either of those, plus like Mana Reflection, Nyx Bloom Ancient, Hearthstone, any of these cards that let you tap for more mana. Well, actually, and just ones that make it so uh, your commander taps for more mana, Yoriak taps for more mana. Those can go infinite, so you can make infinite mana and infinite untaps, and then you can just infinitely tap and untap your commander and if you have any way that you can funnel that mana into something you can give all your opponents mana burn out and burn them out of the game which is a cool way to end the game like that's a cool win con you just need a way to filter out the mana like anything that you can dump it into and so that's what i got for yoriak of the burning gang it's a, it's a very cool card. I like the fact that they bring Mana Burn back with this card. It's very fun. Cool mechanic. It's going to be a card that I might build. This is, this is something that I might, might build. But if you're going to build it, and you got any good ideas for the deck that I didn't mention, or if you're going to use any, idea, any of, of the ideas I did mention, comment down below and let me know. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check us out on Patreon, or if you're going to buy any of these cards, Click on the TCG Player Affiliate link to support the channel. And join the giveaway. It should be visible, like right here, I think. So, click on this box right here. And 
you can join the giveaway. You can win this playmat and you can join us into a game. We will see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.